Batman vs Superman was an atrocious movie. Between a plot that was all over the place, to shoddy character portrayals, it was definitely a letdown. But, the one cool thing that we got to see was Batman's armored suit. That is when he finally fought Superman. Before we get started, check out the description below for all the supplies you'll need. And now going through the basics of making any cosplay, we'll show you how to make this awesome helmet. So let's get cracking. The first thing you have to do is find a template. We're using Dali Lomo's amazing and free template that he made for a cardboard version of the helmet. Print it out to its actual size and cut out all of the pieces. Some will be cut off, so you'll have to tape them together. Make sure to cut the rectangles out of the jaw piece. You'll also see that there are two helmet supports. We'll only be using the one with the pointier nose, so you don't have to cut out the other one. Once everything is cut out and taped together, trace all the pieces onto 4mm EVA foam. What I do is tape bits of the straight edges onto the foam so that it doesn't move. Take an X-Acto knife and cut out all of your foam pieces. With everything cut out, it's time to sand. Dremels are great when it comes to shaping your foam, that's why I tend to use it more often. But if you don't have one, you can use a 400 grit sand block. Sand each piece to get rid of any excess foam and to round your edges. To do this, run the Dremel or sand block at an angle along the edges. You don't need to round out any edges that are going to be glued together, like the four parts on the piece that has the nose and the ears. I like to use a little piece of foam to apply the barge cement glue. Put a thin layer of glue on the piece itself and where it'll be sticking to. Use a hair dryer or heat gun to semi-dry the glue. Then attach your pieces. But be careful, once it's together, you won't be able to pull it apart. First, glue the crevices on the nose piece and sides of the helmet. Then glue each side to the nose piece. That'll be the front of the helmet. Next are the ear pieces. Like the front of the helmet, glue the back helmet's crevices together. Then attach it to both sides of the helmet. Going back to the ears, glue its left and right sides behind the front and back helmet pieces. This will make it easier to slot on the top of the helmet. The top is the trickiest piece to glue on. Glue its crevices and then attach it in this order. The back, left ear, most of the front except a little bit right before the right ear, the right ear, and then the remaining front. For fun, we added this extra detail to the eyes, but you don't need to do that. With the top half of the helmet done, it's time to tackle the bottom. Starting with the pointy nose part, glue the helmet support slightly above the bottom edges of your helmet. This will give the jaw piece depth because it'll be glued on top of this support and behind the top half of the helmet. We noticed that the jaw piece has this inner layer, so to give the helmet even more depth, we traced out another slightly smaller jaw and cut it into three pieces that will need to be glued together. Then we glued it under the main jaw piece. Once those are together, glue it onto the helmet support where the notches are. The neck piece might be slightly smaller or bigger, so we cut ours in half. Glue each neck piece onto the jaw one at a time. Then determine whether you need to cut or add foam to fit each end together. For extra support for the jaw, we traced it out onto a piece of foam and then cut out a sliver as a chin. Glue it inside the front edge of the jaw. If you want to seal up the crevices, you can use FOMO. Dab some water on the foam and then apply the FOMO. It takes about 12 hours for the FOMO to dry. While we waited for it to dry, we added some scratches using the wrench from the Dremel. When the FOMO is fully dry, take a Dremel or sand block to smooth out the FOMO so that it sits flush with the rest of it. After you're done, take a hair dryer or heat gun and heat up all the foam. 
This heat treatment makes the foam stronger because it helps close the surface cells. Now to prep the helmet for painting, we'll need to use Plasti Dip. Plasti Dip helps harden the foam so that the paint doesn't get absorbed into it. It basically gives it a base coat. I used black Plasti Dip because the helmet is metal and I wanted it to look a little worn. I put on two coats of it on the outside and one on the inside. It's always good to do a second coat just in case you missed any spots. It'll take about half an hour to dry between coats. After that, it's time to paint. Take a soft tip paintbrush and apply two coats of silver metallic acrylic paint. Usually for pieces that bend, you want to use acrylic paint over spray paint to prevent cracking. Plus, I feel like you have more control with the look of it using acrylic paint, especially when adding effects like wear and tear. Once the two coats are dried, add some wear and tear to the entire helmet. If you want a more detailed explanation on how to add wear and tear, check out our wear and tear how-to. To seal the paint, take some Pledge Floor Cleaner and apply one light layer to the entire helmet. Sometimes too much floor cleaner could produce bubbles, so make sure you brush them away so that they don't dry on. Now, it's time to add the super cool eye lights. Peel the film covers off each side of the light. Use a scissor to cut it off just before the end. These eye lights are made of two pieces, so the bumpy side is what we'll be able to see out of, while the smooth side reflects the light out. Use Velcro to attach the eye lights inside the helmet. I had my wires point outward, so I stuck the Velcro onto that end. To attach the other Velcro part, I used hot glue. Once I put my eye lights where they'd end up staying, I used electrical tape to hold down the wires. I ran them to the top, and then down to the back of the helmet where the battery pack rested on the helmet support. Then I taped the battery pack too. Turn your eye lights on and you're ready for some vigilante justice. This helmet was definitely challenging to make, but it was worth it because it's so epic. But if this video helped with your cosplay, please give us a like, and if you're looking to learn how to make other cosplays, please be sure to check out our how-to hub and subscribe. Well, I gotta get back to finishing Matt's Batman helmet. He loves Batman, by the way. I'll catch you guys later, because I got a lot of work to do.